The National Weather Service says we are in one of Michigan's wettest periods in modern history. We see it in the record-breaking high water in the Great Lakes and the shocking impacts of shoreline erosion. But what does all this water mean to Michigan's inland lakes and streams? On these inland lakes, we've seen really high surface water elevations, and then we've also seen really high groundwater. And most noticeably, you see that impacting people, you know, in extreme events that could be flooding in homes. Um, less extreme examples would be seawalls sea failing, um, losing property, so losing, you know, part of your yard is now underwater. We're seeing now in the past few years that the inland lakes that aren't dam controlled um, have been way up as well. And that's different from anything I've, I've seen. So part of the thing that, that's been troublesome for us is what used to be just a small storm, um, because there's so much more water everywhere, it, the, the storms plus the high water are doing more damage than we've ever seen before. And not just on equipment, but on shorelines and um, obviously erosion and, and everything else. Where inland lakes have little or no outlet, the water levels have gone up dramatically in the last few years. Groundwater levels too. More and more property owners are encountering trouble like flooded yards and basements that can release debris and pollutants. The rising water levels also threaten the safety of private wells and the effectiveness of septic systems. For these properties where groundwater and surface water are, are at an elevation, they're so high that they're you know encroaching on the property, there's ponding on the property. Um, it is quite clear that the this you know what septic system they have detrimentally impacting groundwater. In Northwest Lower Michigan, private septic systems often include a settling tank and a drainage field where the partially treated wastewater is dispersed into the soil. Since 1972, local health department regulations in this area require at least four feet of separation between the drainage field and the water table below. The active soil layer helps to remove harmful pollutants and microorganisms before they enter the groundwater flow. But with groundwater and lake surfaces at record high levels, there's little room for error. The groundwater level is high. It's obvious that it's only a few inches below the ground surface. You are certainly impacting groundwater. And we would encourage those folks to contact us, the health department. And we will, you know, we'll work with anybody that contacts us to see if we can determine if there's a spot on their property that's higher where we can, you know, basically put in a, a, a new drain field or a new uh, treatment system that will address those issues. In Grand Traverse County and throughout Northern Michigan, health officials face another challenge in protecting surface and groundwater, knowing what and where antiquated septic systems are still being used. The systems that are problems are the ones that uh, we've never we've never been on the property. The, the system was put in before 1972. It predates our codes, and it literally could be anything. It could be a dry well, it could be a small drain field, and there was no requirements for isolation to groundwater. You know, we know that they're out there, and you know, every year systems get replaced. They, you know, people want to make upgrades, they maybe want to put an addition on or something like that. At least that triggers the system to get upgraded. But from the standpoint of like knowing how many are left out there, we really don't know. The way it is in Michigan now, you put these septic systems in the ground and you don't have to look at them ever at all. There's no requirement that they be inspected or maintained. We need to have a statewide requirement that they do be inspected and maintained periodically, just, just to provide basic protection for our water resources. It, it often can work for the benefit of the homeowner too, because they'll have a functioning system that will not back up suddenly on them. So it's got dual benefits. If you address your system and get it taken care of and get it uh, properly permitted and cited um, to where you have a, a system that has a permit on it, the, your property value is going to be, is going to increase substantially. So, I mean, there's that incentive too. Yeah, I think local governments really should step up to the plate. They can enact their own uh, septic ordinances or work with counties to do that. It's especially important because the state does not have a sanitary code. So locals really right now have the prim uh, primary responsibility if they exercise it. And when they do that, they can assure that septic systems are not polluting our groundwater or our surface water and are well maintained to resist the high water levels. And for some property owners, there's also a concern for the safety of their drinking water wells. 
Older wells, wells installed before 1994, were not always sealed around the pipe or casing leading into the ground. That means surface water could slip down along the casing and contaminate the water well. So for any of those folks that have flooding around their wellhead, whether it's, you know, really whether it's old, new or whatever, I would encourage regular testing, uh, regular coliform bacteria testing, just to make sure that, you know, you don't have that issue going on. Now, if you have um, flooding to an extent where it's over top of the casing, then it's definitely going inside the casing and you should not drink the water at all.